Welcome everybody to the new Lightwish webinar session by our convert with trauma. The title of today is Wine Beverage International Brand Strategy. My name is Chiara Tomasi and I'm Marketing and Communication Manager Prime Papers and Brand Protection of our convert with trauma. Today we are presenting a new webinar together with Nicole Poggi, experienced brand strategy in the wine, spirits and food sectors and CEO of Root and Roots. Nicole will delve into the strategy on how to create connections between brands and markets to raise awareness and generate business growth. As an industry insider, Nicole has a, has a wealth of experience to share on how excellent packaging is a core part of a high value brand strategy, especially when launching a new product. Well, welcome everybody. Hello. Let's go with my, my screen. Um, first of all, ciao a tutti. Welcome to uh, this webinar. I'm very excited about this uh, opportunity to, uh, to take you to my, um, my theme that is, uh, of course, wine and beverage brand strategy. Um, so um, just before starting, let me uh, just introduce myself. I'm, uh, I've been in the wine industry since almost a decade, uh, starting from uh, the market, from the UK, then to the US and Canada, and then uh, back to Italy. This is where I'm uh, at, the, at the moment. And uh, finally, after um, working and uh, uh, getting to know what really a brand is, uh, we are now developing together with my studio and with my fantastic team, uh, brands. So uh, we will go together today through what we mean, right, with uh, with brand, with branding, but especially to what it is uh, to develop a brand and definitely a uh, whole strategy. So there we go. Um, starting with the first uh, thing, as you can see, Root and Roots. Um, this is our studio where actually we build brands, we develop brands. And actually, this is where uh, especially you want to plunge entrepreneurs, expo managers, uh, brand developers as well, designers to a global stage, actually connecting an identity together with, uh, with a specific uh, market. Um, so we will be asking you know, this specific question that the most wonderful label alone is definitely not enough. Well, this is a great thing you know, to have a great label. Actually, without a label, that would be quite difficult to develop, uh, of course, a brand, especially an identity. But uh, on my experience, a label is successful when uh, there is both a very strong identity and where there is a strong connection with the, the market. So what we mean that uh, actually together they make sense, right? We have a clear target to where we want to go and sell, and we have a specific price point uh, in a um, price in a specific distribution. So all the dots, they need to come together. This is where, uh, really, this is where, where I love to be. Um, where do we go, actually, together with uh, where brand strategy comes in? Before a packaging, before a label, before an identity, and as well, just after. After, this is because, you know, actually, if you are designers, if you are printers, expo manager, wine producer, be a producers, but not all brand owner, brand owners. I would feel that this, uh, let's say, talk, uh, half hour, forty minutes talk, will be for you. So hopefully you can stay with us today. Um, these are the key things, themes that we will be developing together. Five key points. We will be starting with biology. Actually, you know what? We are all consumers. Yes, and we need to understand why do we buy things. And uh, when we develop a brand, we really uh, all the time need to understand that if we develop a brand, there is somebody, you know, that will be attracted, it will be choosing to buy the brand, and especially will be a long lasting connection. Then we will be developing what brand and branding are together with a more specific sensorial side. We will be uh, talking about storytelling and narrative, but finally, my favorite subject is targeting and positioning. So 
when all the key points they go together then it's finally the moment where we go to the market um i'm honest with you guys i've been traveling so much before covid that finally last year i was all the time in front of my screen talking to people and i feel that all the expo managers all the um, sales people that are, are listening to to me right now they feel the same like we want to go and travel we want to go and meet markets so we will be seeing today that with the digital actually we can do a lot um to create and keep and maintain the relationship but especially that your role selling us something and being the first point of touch in uh, in a market is so much connected with all your colleagues or people actually that started with uh, with the first thing that is the identity um well um, what all brands have in common just one key words that is value and we will be actually um understanding together why well there is a fantastic book that i recommend you to read that actually is biology and that says we are all consumers um we are all consumers because first of all we need to understand uh that selling is like courting somebody but in the end who should we court right who are the right people that we need to understand so we must really find those who believe in what we believe um alternatively we could actually court in somebody remembering when we were maybe teenagers right and we were feeling in love or we were saying oh my god i feel there is some something uh but we were not able to explain why and we will see actually um uh, what this means well um let's start from here i think that the innovation curve the diffusion of innovation from more is somebody that everybody that deals with new brands new markets or especially something new needs really to understand this is the whole population guys uh as you can see the majority is that 34 and 34 percent in between that is the early majority and the late majority and those are the people that are busy doing their stuff so they don't want to listen actually to us that we have maybe new wines new beers new skills to put in the market our boss is yelling at us all the time we want to make turnover budgets um and uh KPI. So all the time, whether we are in the marketing teams and then we need to create new things or we are in the sales, we need to make performance. So uh, I think that this is one of the main interesting points that we will actually see that just 2.5 percent percent are the innovators. The people that are in the market, like us consumers that are they are just there willing to get new stuff and they are those ones who really can wait to have changes so new things coming then 13.5 percent are the early adopters those ones actually that are the first to adopt new things going on the early majority and the late majority again they will be definitely adopting new things but they won't be the first so after the innovation the innovators they tried something then the early adopters come and they really start talking about a new thing and then the early majority buy the, the buys the the brand or the product or the service the late majority when everybody is having let's say i don't want to do uh um so much advertisement but everybody is here with an iphone and then the others arrive and it finally the laggards you know the people that are just sleeping on their sofa and they don't care at all because maybe they they still watch tv with the old 80s tv of, of that time so look at the numbers who do you think are really the people that we should talk target when we have new things new brands new markets so we need to make numbers going so you know what in the end the quality of being extraordinary is the key point of all this all of my speech why because who is the extraordinary here well the early adopters are the only ones so the 13.5 percent in the curve 
that are disposed to listen to us and the ones that are prepared to take risk, to spread ideas to the rest of the curve. They are the ones that really can't wait to test new stuff and be there to say, hey, my God, there is a new denomination. There is a new wine. I can't wait to try. I can't wait to go and be the first to buy online, to, to, um, to taste you know, the varietal or to go and travel to that destination before everybody else will go. Because in the end, everybody, so I feel that all the uh, people that will be listening to us today, uh, by the way, thank you so much because there is a huge wave, by the, by, by the way, from all the world that is listening to our uh, webinar today. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope you'll be satisfied by the end. So going back to the early adopters, those ones are the only one disposed to take the risk and get changes going. And who are the early adopters in our case? So think about your job. Think about what you do in your company uh, as a freelance or an employee. Um, and in the end, you only have a small, small target that has something that has a specific word that is called the otaku. The otaku is when those people have really the enthusiasm uh for something and they have that so much their passion is so high that they want to be the first one to discover something and then they will be the first one to buy and move to the rest of the curve so let's say if you if you think of yourself example i'm one of the first that in my personal life i want to really know of new destinations for maybe uh let's say niche destinations for travels so I'm always there taking my time to understand, oh my God, where should I go on holidays? Where can I dream of going? Well, everybody of yourself has something that is really talking about the otaku. So think about that and then expand that audience. So in the end, we understand that most consumers nowadays, they won't actually buy the new product simply because they don't have money, they don't have time, or they don't need it. We have so much in our days, in our lives, that maybe the only thing that really we want is extra time to spend with the things that we love, with our family, with our friends, or just uh, doing nothing and just uh, uh, detox, let's say. But again, maybe uh, this is the key thing. So in the end, my suggestion is going back to the 80s or 90s or pre-COVID, where the, the meaning was, yes, create everyday reliable product with high quality marketing. Well, nowadays, this is game over, guys, no more. We need all the time to create, sell, uh, talk about extraordinary product that actually can really attract just the right target, just the right people. So yes, create extraordinary things, of course, but be very conscious and attentive to who is the target that will be selling, buying. There's a huge actual difference between brands and uh, they are there because they need to get value behind. That means margin, they, they need, we, we talk about reputation versus private labels or what my friends that actually are maybe brokers or coming from negotiations or, or big companies or even small companies. But in the end, what they have is just a bottle, a liquid inside and the label. This is not a brand because we will see in the rest of the speech that people, if they love a brand, they will be choosing it no matter what. And actually they will be happy to pay the difference between the margin and the perceived value. So this is what we are paying, an extra demand that means a lot to us that we choose to be one of uh, the lovers you know, of that brand. This is something that goes back to, uh, I would say maybe prehistoric times, so long way back. Uh, this is due to our brain. So again, after the diffusion uh, of the innovation in the Moore core, Please take a look in what is uh, really the center of the decisions. This is the limbic brain, is the most ancient part of our brain. There is a huge literature, by the way, if you are happy with that, if you want to study more, 
that I definitely re recommend you, whether you are in the marketing, in the sales, brand owners, uh, to, to go and find that. Because we are all the time, actually, guys, uh, talking about consumers, decisions, people, targets. So the, we, we need really to understand who we are talking to. So the, the, the most ancient part of the brain is, again, the limbic brain, and this controls sentiments, trust, behavior, and decisions. So in the end, when we say, oh, God, this is my gut feeling that is telling me something, I should definitely do this, or let me buy that, let me grab that bottle, let me go to a wine store, and really, I can't wait to get that new Primitivo or new grape variety because it's something that I really can't wait to, to try. And then, or imagine going back to when we love somebody, it's so difficult to explain why with real words. And you know what? It's because we are actually talking to a different part of the brain that is the neocortex that is not that, that ancient as, as the limbic brain that controls the rationality and the language. So one part of the brain is the one that takes decisions of saying, yes, I want a brand. The other part of the brain is what actually says, mm, let me get that and let me uh, find words, you know, together with my decision. So they come in two different, uh, actually, moments before I'm getting my emotional decision and then my, my language and my rationality plays in, comes into play. So why do I exist? What do I believe? And the key question that we need to, to understand is that we buy actually the reason why of a real brand. So when we buy something that is connected to a brand is that we need to all the time understand that the, we buy the real reason that some, something exists. And it is not related to price. It is not related to uh, actually something that is mm, just quality. It is um, coming back to something that is why we exist. So once we find the real meaning that stays behind all our company and all uh, behind the brand, it really is so impactful that it drives your entire organization uh, until you finally audience. So it's like, you know, a fil rouge that puts together all the dots. And much more than that, it gives a vision to your community, gives a vision to your day entrepreneur, because you know very well where you want to go. And also, it makes everyone dream, be inspired, get engaged, and you know why you are doing something. Because in the end, yes, if I am buying, let's say, a brand, I also want to be inspired and I want to be as well an ambassador of that uh, winery, brand, whatever it is. So it gives a reason for belonging. In the end, let's say we need also to understand that 90% of purchasing uh, decisions are all unconscious. I know it's so tough to understand, but 90% of what we decide to buy is coming from an emotional channel. So the decision in the end is unconscious. It's not something that we can understand or we can you know, um, talk with words but it, it is coming from a really an emotional channel. So again, when we create a brand, we attribute to, to, to the brand qualities, traits, and a personality as if it's a person in the end. So we associate a brand with a value for our brain. And this is so much meaningful as like a religion for us. So that's why I want you to get a, just a, a minute of your time and tell me guys, in this test time, what do you think a brand is? Da, 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 da. A few minutes and then a test is coming right there with five very simple questions. Go on, don't think a lot, otherwise you will be too rational and, and, and it will be not an easy question to understand. So uh, what a brand is, select one of the following, a logo, a trademark, number two, a name, a design, a symbol, that identifies a business, a uh, name, a style, a design, words representing a product, or again, an emotional connection with a target, a name, and a logo that drives purchase. Let me know. I'm very curious to get your answer, by the way. We will be going on with what a brand is in my, let's say, um, yeah, identity 
slash market experience, but also what a branding strategy means. Okay, so, wow, very prepared. 59% of you selected an emotional connection with a target. This is the right question. So you know what, I can just say, turn off my camera and I'm going. But I think you will, you will still have a few minutes of listening to the rest. So a brand actually, if I can get again the, the screen going. Just a second. There we go. So a brand, as you said, is an emotional connection with a target and it creates a an, an relationship that will last over time. So it gives us as customers, as clients, people, um, a reason to choose and buy, no matter what the price and no matter the competition. But let's be honest, what does a brand do? First of all, helps uh, consumers navigate. So we choose from a wide range of options. And if we know very well what we are looking for, then it's, it's so much easier for us to go and pick that brand, pick that wine, pick that beer, or pick that label. Second, but most of all, reassure. So gives the customers conviction of having made the right choice. Great choice. When we receive something home with a great packaging, with an e-commerce, maybe the delivery, and there is a letter maybe from the founder, or there is a personal and specific package. Wow, we feel so relieved and so happy with our choice. And then again, third thing is that uh, it gives us a reason to get involved, to, give, uh, to be engaged. So it, it gives an idea that we can identify ourselves with uh, the right product. So once we know what a brand uh, means, and it is an emotional connection with our target, we know what actually a branding strategy or uh, a whole activity of developing a brand is. That is the experience and the value of a brand to make it what consistent on one side and very impactful for the right target. So this is what we do. This is what we do in Root and Roots. With all my network uh, all around the world, uh, we actually want to develop a whole path, a whole strategy to make a specific brand um, more impactful for its target, leverage on its experience and on its value. Again, if we want to create a brand, this is why, because we need to do two main key things, brand awareness and sales. If you just focus on brand awareness, then guys, I'm sorry, but my friends that are working with me for specific project where all the time we are there with numbers and they need to make the right you know number by the end of the um of the budget we need to make sales so that's why myself is so much connected with both marketing teams and uh sales teams because we need to understand that we are part of the same family together for the same actually result that is making something more vibrant, more alive, and then making sales more easier to get and sales again to, to come. So branding, again, is a dynamic process. It's not just one action. Then when I'm done, it says, right, I'm done, and then I'm leaving the game. But it's a whole process. It's something that is an itinerary. And basically, it means having the courage to grab every opportunity and convey the right decision uh, for what consumers should choose you among your competitors. This is my favorite word, performance. Luckily as well with the digital uh, and with the numbers that we make with the, num with the markets, we know very well if our strategy is correct or not. I'm going real quick now. When should you start the process? When should you basically start to um deepen your strategy in case you want to do a new business so startup new merge and acquisition if you want to create a new product a new line an extension line or if you want more sales and more margins and again if you want to get a better better positioning who benefits from branding i'm not let's say the ufo uh, in in each company 
there are three main, uh, actually four uh, people that are benefiting, that benefiting from uh, a branding strategy. First of all, everybody that is connected with a brand, so the internal and the external teams. Why? Because we help you guys to be more engaged and to know very well what the goals are, what the meaning are, and what the tools are. So uh, it is really helping ourselves to get motivated. Then marketing and communication team, how I communicate my product and my business, increasing the value of, of, of my business. It is easier for me to get trucks if my job in developing new product or developing new strategies, you know, making the, 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 the marketing alive makes sense. And especially the sales. So helps the customer to buy, but most of all, my favorite target are the owners, the people, the producers, the directors, because when they have a clear direction of where they are going, they not just have a bigger picture, but especially it's so much easier for them uh, to lead their, uh, their business, their company. And as you can see in the end, what we do is that we are going all to the same destination is really something that it's a whole team uh, job. You cannot do it alone. Myself or any other brand strategist won't do anything alone. We really need all the people involved in the brand. So let's go. Tie up your shoes and where should we start the process? So let's go. First, most important thing, where should we start? Number one, brand identity. I know there are many designers today involved uh, and the identity for you is definitely something. Well, we come just before uh, your job so that will make it easier for you to develop what is the look and feel. So what everybody will be looking and perceiving from a brand. So in the end, brand identity. When we work with wineries, with breweries, with spirit companies, we really understand what makes you distinctive, what are the values behind, what makes you really unique. And this is, in the end, what makes you special? Why are you there? It's not just about quality, it's not just about my heritage, that I'm so many generations old, that my maybe bottle is fantastic. These are, I, I don't want to say bad things, but this is something that is basically people, people don't care. So brand identity is really uh, starting from what we believe in and the real value where we have. It is really how our brand in the end, it is tra translated into the look and feel. And it is the best and most wonderful thing because then the designers here or uh, the people that will be getting the brief, they will be developing and looking how we can see the brand, touch it, hear it, breathe it, taste it. So involve all the five senses. There is real, the real fuel uh, for uh, a brand engagement. Let's go with the first example, a brand that I really love is Brand Breeder, a fantastic case study from Spazio di Paolo. Um, that to me is not just one of the key examples of how a great packaging, you will see now just the packaging, but how a whole strategy has been developed very well. Um, actually, Spazio di Paolo uh, put together a few different brands like Album di Famiglia, uh, Fluido in Sicilia, No Man's Face, putting together the target, the positioning, the identity, a specific care of the paper and the packaging, choosing the best grapes and the best stories of producers all over Italy, and then be able to market those with, a, as you can see, very a uh, specific uh, look and feel to the world. And this project has been launched, I believe last year, um, and is really conquering the whole world. So this is per the perfect example of when a case study is not just working well because the packaging is great, but because there is a whole path in behind. So it's for me a great exposure, but just as also a great uh, experiment. And then let's go with our senses. As we know very well, if we put all the senses together, then this is something that is so much in, impactful. Um, we have, yes, the five senses all together, but the best is when we combine them, them. Let's see here, smell and hearing together. They are the most powerful. 
So if we allow the consumers to feel, you know, the, um, the senses and we hear a, a sound or a voice, this is really so much important together. Then the vision, everybody, you know, is, is really working very well with what we just see, but this is not enough. We can work a lot with just a visual, but if we don't combine that with the other senses, then maybe it's not that impactful. Sound and image together, they are very memorable if they are simultaneous, but also the touch. Imagine when we go to a clothing shop, the first thing that we do with our hands, we touch actually the clothes in the shop. And there is a big chance that by the end, just because we, you know, we got a texture in our hands, then we go and buy that. So remember very well, the purchase is driven from a sensual assault when the senses and the emotions are all together delivered to, um, to our uh, brand. Second and most important as well is the story. So again, the narrative. The English people here, the English speaker here uh, would definitely understand uh, easier what I'm telling you about. That you do have, guys, two different words, history, and story. The Italians have just one word, maybe, story, uh, uh, storia. And this is not the same thing. In the whole panels with producers or entrepreneurs, when we talk about narrative, they all the time go to the same mistake. I was born in blah, blah, blah. I have five families, generations uh, in my winery, and so on and so forth. So this is, in the end, not just uh, what the consumers are not looking for, because the result of a good storytelling is to create a long-lasting human connection and engagement with our target. Simply because when people feel that they are part of our story, they will follow us no matter what. So just close your eyes for a second and think of the little stories that maybe your grandma or your parents that were telling you before going to bed when you were a kid. This is the power of storytelling. This is the idea of giving you and inspiring you with stories, images, words, sounds, and dreams. Let's go with a second case study, Amaro del Ferdi, a great example when uh, actually the restyling of an eye iconic actually um, Amaro del Ferdi from a young designer, fantastic designer, Salvatore. So the goal here was to tell the story of the Arabic mountains with a new actually um, image and style using a very specific symbol, the Arabic goat, using as well a specific uh, paper that will definitely help as well the story to be better told. Going on, I would say that the best, best and the most effective market tool, marketing tool for you is to sell your story. Especially, guys, because in a competitive marketplace, a compelling story can tell much more than the final product. Then, third point, and then we are done with the positioning by the end, is the target. Have that image very clear in your mind. And when we are... When we need to create a product, a creation of a new brand, or we especially we need to sell something, think very well. Who has to know you? Who are you talking to? Who are you selling to? And especially, are they listening or are they busy with the sound of our other competitors? So here is a, is a wonderful ex other a third case study from Borga, from Cantina Borga Winery in Veneto that I've been working with uh, Studio De Materia. I'm saying hi to my friends in, uh, in Veneto. We've been developing this uh, whole new line, actually starting three years ago, with a completely new target in mind, new generation, millennial, energy, colors, to deliver a contemporary um, range from Veneto, new age. So as you can see here, faces, people, lettering, that all together from the digital to the markets, we've been following the whole path. And again, finally, there we go to the positioning. So think about very well, what we, do we mean with positioning? Positioning is a clear world that is uh, what we do intentionally as maybe entrepreneurs, especially salespeople, to create the perception of our brand in the minds, in the brains of our target. 
So it's not just about price point, it's what we do as choices, actions, activities, kickoff activities, digital support, um, and as, especially as well the path that once we know the target, the distribution, what can we do together with them to help them feel engaged in our story and then help the sellout. So the choices in the short and in the long run that we do to make our brand accessible in the market. This to me is the best case study that we couldn't talk to, Colle Frisio, a special wine uh, that has, has been in and out, dedicated and developed for the Asian market. Just to go very quickly, retail price point, as you can see, 100 euros, 300 euros in the Russian, Indonesian and Chinese market. Sales results, well, they were just supposed to, to sell 10,000 bottles in, in one year. Actually, in 12 days, they've been sold out of 100,000 because they've been developing, you know, that brand starting from the insight of the consumer, the insight of the market, and so going vice versa. Not what the, let's say, uh, the ego of the producer or the creative touch of the designer or the marketing manager that feels maybe creative that day wants to put in a label, but from a market to an identity and then to finally a label. There we go. I'm just about to go. So experience, to me, this is the most powerful thing that we can do. My favorite case, um, case study is Le Cave de Pirene. I'm sure maybe many Italians that are listening to me, they, they know what I'm talking about. Le Cave de Pirene is a key Italian distributor for artisanal, small niche uh, wine producers. They release every year a catalog uh, done by paper that is a whole new world. Every year there is a whole story. This was um, a year ago, the edition of a year ago, with illustrations, stories, and in the end is a whole new journey through the wines of a catalog. But it's not boring, it's really taking you to what is the leitmotiv of that year. These are the events that I've been to. Uh, these are the events that before COVID they were still allowed and, and fingers crossed we'll be doing them very soon again, where the same illustrator illustrations that were put in the catalog, that they were coming alive, you know, in the events where the target were, were the traders, restaurant people, sommeliers, wine lovers, when you were not just tasting wines from the producers, so pouring the wines, but it was a real party. You were in a location where the catalog was coming alive. And here you can see a few pictures of, of myself pouring wines and again with the real gadgets of the Cap de Pirene. So to conclude, guys, and then I'm happy to answer to your questions. My, my three key suggestions and tips for you are understand your people. Understand who is your target. Know very well your purpose. But most of all, create exciting opportunities for participation. I'm leaving you with the 10 key points of the whole process of brand strategy. This is the, to summarize uh, my job. First of all, understand very well what are the goals of your company and of your brand. Know very well. Everybody will be telling you at the beginning, oh, you know what, we just need to sell more. But it's not just about that. You know, many times where we experience there are so many changes that need to be taken into consideration. So there is much more the job with the right people inside so it's a whole mediation process rather than just uh, a sales activity. Knowing very well your company and your brand goals. Second step, uh, brand, business and market audit. So understand from uh, the brand perspective, the current brand, the business, so the, the, the company involved and the market. What are the feedback? What are the insights that we can grasp? What is actually the numbers and the figures? So we always start from there. Numbers, sales, and, and then reaches. Th third step, build a roadmap. Once you have the goals, problems, find the solutions. Build a roadmap with specific tasks and timing. So you can, can, it can uh, be concrete. 
put together an identity. So start with the values, put together then the visual, the tone of voice, whatever that comes together in terms of colors, emotions, as we said together, the five senses. Five point, fifth point, understand your target. Know very well who you, you are talking right now, but especially who is the new potential target of your rebranding path. So understand your target, both trade and consumer. In the end, nowadays, uh, during after COVID, we can only say that B2B is the same thing as B2C. Trade and consumers, they all go together. So if we need to, to get an activity, strike. They need to be all together, summarize. Uh, six point, define your story, put together a story, a narrative, and then decline the story according to the tools, whether it is a website, a paper thing, or just a digital editorial plan, or why not? Even the speech that you guys, the export managers here, need to, to say when you want to actually um, um, introduce uh, the brand with a new market. Seven point, again, number seven, where are you in the market? How and why? Let's go finally talking really to the people that are in the market. Why should we go? Where should we do the activities? Let's put them in place. Number eight, interact with your internal team. You need all the time to motivate them. Um, so this is to me very important. And um, number nine, and uh, I feel here is the designers will be feeling um, involved, design and create personal experiences. So we need to understand the experiences, how we can involve them. Last but not least, involve the market. So put them all the activities all together and that would be really a long lasting activity and path and especially success. Guys, I'm done for today. I really thank you for your time, for listening to me. I'm ready now for a few questions. I will just listen to you with my three keywords, inspire, enlighten, and especially engage. Thank you. So um, yeah, if you do have any question, uh, you can put your actually in, in the box that you have aside and I'll be happy to go through them. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole, for giving us uh, this incredible insights uh, into the brand strategy. Uh, and uh, uh, good afternoon again, all of you guys uh, who decided to participate to this uh, webinar. I Now it's time, as, uh, Nicole, as Nicole was saying, uh, for Q&A session. So please uh, write your questions in the chat box uh, and we will try to answer all of them. Let's uh, wait for the first uh, questions. Oh, here they are. Uh, first question, Nicole. I yeah. am a designer and my current task is to create a new label for a new product line. What is the frame that a brand strategist provides to the designer to lead the whole process? Great. So I know that there are many designers here today that are involved and are listening to us. Uh, before a designer needs to understand, uh, let's say, to put his hands into activity, uh, it is really the task and the time for a brand strategist to come in action. So the where, what and basically why especially we provide you guys is a whole roadmap where we precise very well the audit of the company, so where exactly the company is and where, uh, what are the problems and where are the solutions in terms of new markets, new trends, especially as well new targets that we need to, um, to, to identify. Then we will be also developing a whole new uh, identity. So giving you very well, not just the keywords, the values, a whole insight of the story, uh, and a mood board that will be your reference. We have uh, in my team, actually, uh, Robbie, that will be, that is fantastic. And she's actually working on that. She's transferring a whole identity into mo both visual and tone of voice. 
So you will be receiving a whole roadmap with the clear instructions because you know very well that when you work directly, maybe with a producer, it's not that easy to understand. They maybe just say, I want a new label and it needs to be fantastic, but this is not enough. You need to understand very well where they really want to go. And where is your actually extra value instead of wasting time with a client um, into you know, solving their personal, let's say, uh, feeling or their personal touch. Many of you would say, I love the yellow, I, I love the red. Oh, put it bigger. No, no, don't do that. Don't use that font. I don't like it. You are the designer's guy. So you need to get the power on. And this is why my job comes into play. This is why we need all the time to accompany the, the producer and to say, you know you what, you are in great hands. So to summarize, if you are a designer, you will be receiving, to me, a great uh, thing is a clear roadmap with the identity, uh, story, mood board, target, and the steps, concrete steps of your actions. Hope I reply to you. Any other question? Yes, we are plenty, actually. Um, another question is, my goal is a rebranding to, uh, to be more appealing to new markets. How would you approach uh, the story and the new look and feel? Okay, so in case you are, I believe um, you want to actually sell your brand into new markets, right? So uh, you will be dealing, whether it's yourself or your team as new business base, basically uh, developers. How would you approach? Uh, you will always approach by really understanding very well Two key things. One, your current distribution. What are their feedback? What is the language that they are actually willing you to get? Many times with as, as well my clients, when I realize that they have never put in place any sales tools, really my hairs become like that. I say, well, you, you sell into maybe 20, 30 different markets and you only have a PDF presentation nothing else and the people that are actually managing your social media or your digital activities they are just doing that for which reason they need to be connected so we start by asking and um, knowing very well your brand managers that you have in the market what are the feedback of your customers what are the performances understanding the identity and the identity of your targets like age um, uh, sell out, uh, how many times they've been selling, buying the product, where, especially when, which time of the year. So doing a whole new, uh, actually, um, dialogue together with the people that are currently in the market. Then second, but, uh, also important task is to identify in that market, the other competitors of yours, what they are doing. Uh, how they are performing, uh, which stories they are selling, what are the uh, tools or the activities that they are putting in place. If, example, the expo manager goes X times a year, if they use uh, digital maybe materials or events, incoming, anything that is um, uh, actually helping the performance. Third, but, and, and last, is to match these two, so the feedback of the distribution, uh, your competitors, together with a new insight. And here becomes uh, the stage of my other colleague, Ophelia, that is, I know is, she's listening to us today, that is, she comes from a more consumer market and behavioral uh, approach of a person. So knowing very well what, why actually you buy a certain product of a market. When we, you, you mix all the three elements then all together and then you, you need to be basically able to identify a strategy. So where do we go? What is again the target? Which activities we put in place? And finally, how do we help our distribution? Uh, whether it can be tools, price point or incentive, how do we engage our clients and again the people that buy from our client whether we do online uh, off trade on on trade how do we make you know the chain uh, profitable until the final consumer 
Thank you. Another question, uh, Nicole. Um, yeah. I want to I want to expand uh, the distribution in different markets and increase the prices. How to start? Oh, okay. So uh, profitability and margins. This is one of my actually uh, key uh, questions from clients in the last year. Uh, because they realize that potentially they've been selling uh, to different markets but using so many different pricing that they have not put in place an identity strategy but just uh, selling like that. Who cares? Like in one market, three euros, in the other, four, in the other, 280, and in the rest, oh, I don't know why I'm selling under price. Um, so again, I would say, uh, first thing is the data, um, analyze, uh, your performance at the moment and put together, whether it is an Excel, a pivot or any tool with your, um, uh, actually program, um, the trends, uh, of the market. And then, uh, again, uh, if you want to do something, let's say new, understand what you could do uh, in, um, yes, thank you for the question that I'm seeing uh, right now. Um, so uh, again, starting from the data that you have right now and then uh, attach them very well with your new story. So once you know the, the, the data, put together them with your product and then try to understand what is actually the investment that you could do uh, to leverage on your identity, potentially in better tell your story. Whether it is a whole narrative campaign and you do it online at the moment, or you do with ambassadors on site, you can also do incentives to come and visit you at the winery. But once you really need to understand what is the, let's say, um, price point that you could uh, raise, and in the end, how many more, um, uh, let's say investment you can you can do in uh, in the market. So analyze once you have the analysis, understand what is not performing well, and then put together um, a, a new development development phase. I I think there is another question. Um, yes, uh, 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 it's uh, talking about entering uh, the global market with a brand uh, from a small country. Apart yeah. from the looks and story of the product, distribution companies are the key. What is your approach oh. to this? Yes, so if you are uh, willing to enter a global market, and again, I'm curious to know where actually you are writing from, uh, from a small country, you need all the time, as again, I believe you, you will be talking about maybe wine or beer or a, you know, a, a liquid um, product, I feel that you would need to carry your area, uh, your, your value with you. So in many cases, I always recommend to raise the awareness uh, of where you come from. So build a more genuine, as much as possible, um, sense of place. So instead of just the more, maybe going more commercial with uh, the, uh, both the look and the story, try to get the the approach of the people, the personality of the people that live in your uh, country and, and try to be a sort of touristic guide uh, as if people that will be actually, uh, you know, approaching your new brand will feel like traveling when they take you, when they, when they buy you, when they drink you. So I feel that what is the, uh, yes, distribution company is key. But again, if you come from a small country, depending on the quantity and the, and the volume that you have, you really need to understand very well what is your targeting, right? Your, your, your distribution target. Start with content first. So build that poetry and that experience from your area, involve the distribution. And then why not as well, in, uh, instead of going bigger, um, going big first of all, start with a niche, maybe distribution. And in that distribution, get people that are willing to go out and tell your story instead of just uh, sending pricing and samples like that. So I've seen many actually distribution network and I'm working with many actually right now where they really take so much uh, time of their sales team 
to go out, knock doors, and uh, invest in in uh, story, in content. Um, yes. So I see my my I believe my last question. I'm reading myself. How will the wine industry develop in the next year? On trade, online, or supermarket? Well, guys, I don't have any. Let's say um future forecast and i think it's is so difficult um but what i see right now working both with artisanal and negotiation cooperatives and distributions i think that they will will be actually expecting a more polarized industry so whether we go in with uh, more niche producers and at the same time um niche um, um di uh, distributions so uh as i was telling you people that will be going out talking and selling directly to consumers so the D dtc so direct to consumer channel will be again expanding so much i feel that with the uh, whole the on trade channel unfortunately that is has been decreasing uh, I suggest to many of my clients as well to turn that amount, that turnover to two things, online, of course, if they are alone and small and they cannot do it, create associations, create groups of companies, guys, whether you can invest less on your own, but then have a bigger impact. So go online in that sense or invest in creating local experiences. So. Uh, hosting people, opening uh, your breweries, your wineries, and invest in education. How can I, uh, again, tell my story in a better way? How my pricing, if I'm visiting a winery, can be consistent? I see so many times when, uh, when we visit and we do hospitality projects that producers maybe don't know a lot how to price their, their wines or their beers. And in the end, they are not benefiting, but they are hum they are harmful to the distribution. And in terms of the retail, yes, the ones that have the retail, um, the distribution in hand now have the power. But again, in those hands, I feel that uh, there is a lot, a lot, a lot that we can do, especially because many times, I'm sorry for the off trade people here, it's very boring what we can see on shelves. Labels are maybe okay, but brands, guys, are like private labels. They don't make an impact. So invest really in creating a brand in, instead of just selling something that has no value. Because you are wasting an opportunity actually to uh, create a long lasting relationship. So well, just to conclude, I feel that if we invest in a brand, whether we are the key people in a winery, in a company, or, or just uh, uh, consultants, we need to understand that if we do it, it's because we want to create a sense of belonging. Um, and if we don't understand that, and everybody is just moving, you know, to make numbers going, or any label, who cares? We are wasting our time. More and more consumers, we will be demanding as we know how you know we've been suffering in the last year we know very well that what we drink we eat and where we spend our time with needs to have a value so i'm going back to my favorite word value thank you well thank you thank you thank you very much nicole for sharing with us uh, this valuable uh, content on the brand strategy which I'm sure uh, will be very useful for many of the attendees. I hope so, at least. Um, I also want to thank you all, um, all the participants uh, for being with us uh, this afternoon. And uh, I invite you all to follow us on our social media for further updates uh, on our up upcoming webinars. Thank you and goodbye. Ciao. Thank you.